Hello everyone. Wine is known as the nectar of the gods. It's a fascinating drink that elevates the spirit and intoxicates the senses. But how much of the process involves stomping the grapes with feet and how is wine actually made? Let's take a look at that and a whole lot more in this video. Winemaking can be traced back to Egypt as far as 5000 BC. Archaeologists have found cave wall paintings not only showing the use of wine but wine jars as well. At some point in the past winemakers started employing foot treading or stomping to extract juice from the grapes. While this may sound unusual, the process has its benefits. First, the pressure applied with feet was relatively gentle and helped avoid the release of bitter tannin or astringent compounds. Secondly, due to the low temperature of the human body, the process did not release excessive heat, maintaining the desired conditions for fermentation. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the beginning. Grape selection. The winemaking process begins with a careful selection of grapes. The choice of grape variety depends on the type of wine desired, as different grapes contribute unique flavors, aromas, and characteristics. Factors such as climate, soil composition, and vineyard location also play crucial roles in grape selection. Once the grapes have reached optimal ripeness, they are harvested. The timing of the harvest is critical as it significantly influences the flavor profile of the wine. You see, if the grapes are underripe they may have low sugar levels, low alcohol, and high acidity. On the contrary, if the grapes are overripe, they have the opposite characteristics. A perfect balance therefore must be struck when harvesting grapes to ensure that the wine is the best possible. For this purpose, Vineyardists inspect samples of clusters of wine grapes with a refractometer to determine if the grapes are ready to be picked. The refractometer is a small handheld device the size of a miniature telescope that allows the vineyardist to accurately check the amount of sugar in the grapes. If the grapes are ready for picking, a mechanical harvester, usually a suction picker, gathers and funnels the grapes into a field hopper or mobile storage container. These mechanical harvesters, or in some cases robots, are now used in most medium to large vineyards, thereby eliminating the need for handpicking, which was the norm in the past. First used in California vineyards in 1968, mechanical harvesters significantly decrease the time it takes to gather grapes. The harvesters have also allowed grapes to be gathered at night when they are cool, fresh, and ripe. After harvesting, the grapes are transported to the winery for processing. The first step is processing, crushing, where the grape skins are broken to release the juice. As mentioned before, traditionally this was done by stomping on the grapes and some wineries still employ this process as a way of preserving the craftsmanship of the past. However, in modern times wineries usually employ the services of a crusher stemmer machine. Some crusher stemmer machines are hydraulic while others are driven by air pressure. The grapes are crushed and the stems are removed leaving liquid must that flows either into a stainless steel fermentation tank or a wooden vat. For white wine, all the grape skins are separated from the must or wine juice by filters or centrifuges before they undergo fermentation. For red wine, the whole crushed grape including the skin goes into the fermentation tank or vat. This is because during fermentation red wines undergo maceration, a process where the grape skins remain in contact with the fermenting juice. This extracts color, tannins, and additional flavors from the skins. During the fermentation process, wild yeast are fed into the tank or vat to turn the sugar in the must into alcohol. Some winemakers may also use cultured yeast for their wines. As far as the type of yeast goes, it can vary. Winemakers are continuously experimenting with different kinds of yeast to improve the quality of their wine. In addition, cane or beet sugar may be added to increase the alcoholic content. Adding sugar is called chaptalization. Usually, chaptalization is done because the grapes have not received enough sun prior to harvesting. The winemaker will use a handheld hydrometer to measure the sugar content in the tank or vat. The wine must ferment in the tank or vat for approximately 7 to 14 days depending on the type of wine being produced. After crushing and fermentation, wine needs to be stored, filtered, and properly aged. Many wineries still store wine in damp subterranean wine cellars to keep the wine cool, but larger wineries now store wine above ground in epoxy-lined and stainless steel tanks. The tanks are temperature controlled by water that circulates inside the lining of the tank shell. Wine can also be stored in oak barrels or concrete vats. Oak aging imparts additional flavors and aromas to the wine, influencing its complexity and structure. 
The duration of aging varies depending on the wine style and winemaker preferences. To remove any remaining sediment or particles, the wine is clarified through fining and filtration. Fining agents such as bentonite or egg whites are added to bind with undesirable particles, allowing them to settle and be easily removed. Filtration further refines the wine's clarity. In some cases, winemakers may blend wines from different batches or grape varieties to achieve a desired flavor profile. This is common in regions where multiple grape varieties are grown, providing winemakers with a palette of flavors to work with. Once the winemaker is satisfied with the wine's characteristics, it is time for bottling. The wine is carefully transferred from aging vessels to bottles, and in some cases a small amount of sulfur dioxide is added to prevent oxidation and microbial spoilage. After bottling, the wine is sealed with a cork or alternative closure such as a screw cap. Most medium to large-sized wineries now use automated bottling machines and most moderately priced and expensive wine bottles have corks made of a special oak. The corks are covered with a peel-off aluminum foil or plastic seal. Cheaper wines have an aluminum screw-off cap or plastic stopper. The choice of closure can impact the wine's aging potential and susceptibility to oxidation. Finally, labels are applied providing essential information about the wine including its origin, vintage, and alcohol content. If you're curious about the word vintage, it refers to the year in which the grapes used to make the wine were harvested. It is a way of indicating the specific growing season and weather conditions in a particular year, which can significantly impact the characteristics and quality of the wine. Wine enthusiasts often pay attention to the vintage because variations in weather conditions such as temperature, rainfall, and sunlight during the growing season can influence the ripening of the grapes and consequently the flavor, aroma, and overall profile of the wine. Certain years may be considered better or worse for grape growing, and this can be reflected in the perceived quality of the wines produced in a given vintage. In some wine-producing regions certain years may be declared as exceptional, leading to a higher demand and potentially higher prices for wines from that vintage. It's important to note that not all wines are vintage dated. Some are non-vintage blends that combine wines from different years to achieve a consistent flavor profile. While some wines are ready for consumption shortly after bottling, others benefit from further aging in the bottle. This aging period allows the wine to evolve and develop more complex flavors and aromas. The optimal aging time varies depending on the wine type and individual preferences. All facets of wine production must be carefully controlled to create a quality wine. Such variables as the speed with which the harvested grapes are crushed, the temperature and timing during both fermentation and aging, the percent of sugar and acid in the harvested grapes, and the amount of sulfur dioxide added during fermentation all have a tremendous impact on the quality of the finished wine. That was all about the journey of a grape from the vineyard to a wine bottle. If you're curious about how sugar is made, check out our video on the production of sugar. Thanks for watching.